Everything else can wait. Give me your oh, I hope I'm not too late. Oh, give me your oh, Everything else can go away. Oh, give me your oh, I hope I'm not too late. Majuna muyo diano, avilayo. Masami na ya dija, umina aso na vio. Amena uja na muka juyo, avina. Hallelujah. Those of you who are supporters of football clubs, whenever your team scores a goal, I believe that your excitement can erupt more than this. Now, can you show Jesus your love, your reverence, and your joy in his presence? With a shout of praise. Amen. Um, before we take flight, I want to salute God's servant, Pastor Franklin, the angel over this house. Can we celebrate him? Also, with us is an erudite minister of the gospel, Mr. Welt. Can we celebrate him? Thank you so much. Your ministry has blessed me, and it is a privilege finally meet you in person. Thank you so much. Can we celebrate ourselves? Let me say something um, as a footnote before we take flight. By October last year, there was a particular mission God began to lay upon my heart to confront. And so I was instructed to cancel all of my external engagements. It caused a lot of challenge. A lot of people didn't understand. Your meeting will be the first time I will be leaving Kaduna after that instruction. And so God, God, God wants to do something strategic here. Let's pray for one minute wherever we are. Please don't be casual tonight. Something can shift around your life. A season will change like night and day. Just go ahead and make your request known to God. Go ahead and register your desire. But by all means, speak to him. Don't be quiet. Pataka poko fahatash. Tebeke tasko pakata baya. Lente kopendo sofu kupahasatish. Jete te 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 peke te bara hafa kata Mandua kumbe le sele kita andush Jete te 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 bere kopos Mandua kumbe te kindu hasati Jete te 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 beke te bar Mandu kumbe le kete kaya Shapa papa paya Lendua kampa te kofe kete banu Endo kope te kefe te kepe rahava Can you lift up your voice? and gain some millage in the spirit building up yourself building up yourself building up yourself in your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost
of this world into compliance with the laws of God. In the light of that, I want to retreat the central, the central theme of the Christian faith. There are a lot of departures, a lot of side attractions that unfortunately have become the emphasis. There are many things that are supposed to be byproducts of our priesthood that have become the emphasis of our priesthood. When we begin to make on the minor, the major things become obsolete. So the idea tonight is that God will begin to retreat the emphasis of the Spirit and the current revelatory position of the Spirit to us. There is a reason behind matters like this and every time God calls us as a people to resound His commandments to our heart is because He wants to subscribe an army. The central theme of the Christian faith is about the story of a kingdom and a king. It's about dominion, about conquest. It's about warfare and it's about prevalence. That is the central theme of the Christian faith. I know that your bank account happens to be an emphasis from time to time. But it is not an emphasis for any spirit. In fact, your bank account is the least of the, the, the items in the scale of preference of the spirit. Unfortunately, we want to stay around the house, the cars, money in our account as part of the things we use to check the faithfulness of God and to check our capacity to do business in the altar of priesthood. But tonight I want to show us something. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 the Bible says and God took the man whom he formed and placed him in the garden to dress and to keep it. And God took the man that he formed and placed him in the garden to dress and to keep it. Please say dress. Say keep. Maybe you say it one more time. Say dress. Say keep. Come on, Potakot. Is that how best, how best we can run together? Say dress. Say keep. And so there is a particular strategy consistent with the character of God that when he had perfected forming the man, he allocates a territory to the man. He allocates a region to the man. He allocates a space to the man. And that particular space, there is a priesthood responsibility that that man is going to face. It is to dress and to keep. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, the Bible says, Before I formed you in your mother's womb, before your father and your mother knew themselves, he says, I knew you. I sanctified you and I ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. So God was saying that you are not who you are because a man married a woman. God was saying you did not become a, a, an individual or an entity because a man proposed to a woman. He says you were real in eternity even before men cooperated to bring you into time. And so the reason why your mother met your father, the reason why they got married, it is to afford a human body for a particular spirit that has been formed from the corridors of eternity. And so God was saying, before I formed you, so before your parts came together, he says, there's another version of you that I knew, that I ordained, that I sanctified. There are three layers of encounters. Your spirit has intercourse with God before you enter time. The first one is that God knew you. Can you say he knows me? So in John chapter 1 verse 7 and verse 6, the Bible says there was a man sent from God, not sent by God. So his address was God. Sent from God whose name was John. Verse 7 says the same came. 
that person he says I knew before you were formed in your mother's womb I knew you God says the same came the same one that I knew was the one that came I'm trying to ask you a question with what I'm building is it this version of you that God knows is it this you sitting here that God sent is it this you sitting here in this hall that God knew from the studios of eternity the truth is if everybody will be honest tonight and open our hearts there will be encounters that will link us back to our preordinations in God This is everybody's responsibility. Everybody's assignment is to dress and to keep whatever territory that was assigned to you. This is why they did not ask whether you are a soldier. The Bible just says, as a good soldier. So, you are already a soldier. They didn't ask whether you want to fight or not. They say, we wrestle. So, they didn't ask you, would you fight? They say, we wrestle. They told you what your weapon will be. The weapons of our warfare, they are not canal. So, they began to prepare you for the state you are coming into. It's a place thrown into war. There have been a war that spirits have initiated long before the earth was created. The first place there was war was not earth, it was heaven. The first, in Revelation chapter 12, you will see the account of the war that broke out in heaven. The first place valiant warriors manifested was not earth, it was heaven. The moment they began to talk about war, they introduced the name of an angel that has never been heard before. So, all this while, you will talk about Lucifer. You will talk about Gabriel. But the day war broke out, a man who was fought for war, that is the day warriors will manifest. The Bible says, and Michael and his angels fought against the great red dragon and his angel. That was how they introduced him. But not too many people here knows that they are soldiers. So we are not conscious of the battle mode of destiny. A lot of people here are living for pleasures. A lot of people here are trying to use God. God is an ATM for you. Give me, I receive, I tap, I connect, I, I all, all kinds of cliches. There are only a few that are prosecuting his will with their life. Meanwhile, when you continue on this path of selfishness and self-centeredness, by the evening phase of your life, you will realize that you have not advanced anything in kingdom. The totality of your pursuit is a self-driven life. See what Jesus says. Who is it that wants to follow me? Let him deny himself. This is the criteria to be able to carry the burdens of God. You will have to forget your own self. That is how you can carry God's burden and push it in your generation. Now in Port Harcourt, where are those who were sent to dress and to keep it? To dress means bring it into compliance with the natures of righteousness. To dress means civilize the space. When God looks from above, let the state of Potakot reflect his ideas and it will be certain ambassadors, certain sent ones, certain apostolos. They are the ones that enter time with this sovereign assignment. Dress it. To keep means to secure your territory. Don't lose any space in your own time. Meanwhile, it is now a day that the lands that the elders conquered, it is now a day Philistines gained it and sand filled ancient wells. It is in our days that portals of revival that have kept a territory saturated with God's presence for many years. It's in our days because a callous generation emerged. All they think about is themselves. People are trying to use God at every level. We have not started. We are dead already. Look at our borders. See how porous they became. Look at the holy altar. See how Satan has infiltrated. Because we don't know how to keep. To keep is a military word. It means to guard. It says guard your heart with all diligence. The word is the same word used there. To keep. Keep your heart. Keep it. It takes warfare to secure a territory. It takes warfare to secure a family. It takes warfare for the altars of idolatry to be dethroned. And when you now come. And you cannot sustain your, your particular alliance to that altar that your elders used to. Can we pray for one minute wherever you are? Just ask the Lord. Wake me up. Wake me up. Wake me up. Somebody will cry, open my ears. Let me hear. Let me hear this clarion call for manifestation.
this be the man that turned the world upside down this be the man that turned the world upside down Listen, a new season is upon us and the emphasis of the spirit must be reiterated so that we take dressing. While we are busy trying to go from door to door, trying to share the glorious gospel, which is of course a very brilliant effort, it's the unsaved. The spirits that are colonizing the souls of men, they are not using that strategy. They are more interested in territories than they are interested in individuals. They know that if they dominate a territory, they can write the law of that land. When they write laws from a realm higher than where man operates, you will find out that if you are living contrary to that law, you will be experiencing a lot of disfavor. Because the people who write those laws, they also raise law enforcers. The law enforcers are there to enforce the laws. So that in a place where immorality have been endorsed if you live holding to the altars of consecration your life will be like there is a disadvantage that holiness is now bringing into your life because the way of iniquity have been endorsed everybody can follow routes of iniquity and get cheap gains but a man that chooses to lay hold on the altars of consecration it will look like he is not wise because the spirits that have written the laws they have dominated a territory they were not thinking about men the Bible speaking in Isaiah chapter 60 verse 2 it says behold the darkness shall cover the earth they didn't come for men first the first place they targeted was territory so the first agenda of darkness is to cover the earth the moment they have dominated the earth the next thing it says cross darkness the people so people are not the first attack the first attack is a territory darkness shall cover the earth every region you go there are certain compromise that is predominant in that space that is the handwriting of a prince in that space the reason why we live the way we live now is because one our ancestor fell adam and we too we did not follow history enough to know what we lost so we think that salvation is to bring us into a comfortable life on earth we don't know that it is about dominion it's about thrones it's about government it's about prevalence it's about planting the flag of jesus in territories so that your life becomes a conduit of the divine but many people are still consumed using god to serve their personal need and if that is all you do with your life you will look like you're making gain until like i said the evening phase of your life you will realize you have not advanced any purpose of god the totality of your life is a self-seeking adventure I'm glad the number of people who are in the hall this evening. This is just what we need to shake, to shake Portacot. <laughs> By the time you know and you embrace this mood I'm telling you about, you will know why you should be praying. You know a lot of people, they think prayer is about prayer points. You don't know that prayer is about synergy. It's about synchronizing a realm with another. Prayer is access. Prayer is legitimizing a transaction. It is only men that can give legitimacy to the interference of spirits. God, as well as Satan, all of them are looking for vessels. If Satan is angry and he wants to do something today, the first burden is to find a man. A man that can align well enough. A man with the right gifting that can communicate that intent. A man with the right level of reckless abandonment that can let him ride through them. This is what Jesus was speaking about when he looked at Peter. And he says, upon you I will build my church. And a type of people called the gates of hell will not prevail. Who are these gates? They are not. A gate of hell is not a structure. A gate of hell is a human being that has availed his vessel for the courts, for the atmosphere, for the economy, for the culture of hell to permeate the earth through them. So there are gates in Zion and in hell. In fact, the Bible speaking, it says, the Lord, the Lord, loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob, Psalm 87. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion. Who are these ones called the gates of Zion? 
they are the ones that God's atmosphere, God's economy, God's culture can flow through them. You see these wires that they use to connect this bulb? They also conduct electricity. But they are only wiring cables. There are other wires that are used to carry electricity from the power plants to supply cities. They are called high tension cables. This is a cable. That is a cable. But they cannot do the same thing. If God wants to move into a city, he needs capacity. Men who, whose ambition has been purged. So that it is like it is like capacity I'm speaking about now is the ability to die to your own ambition so that you become an absolute vessel to be spent by God. This is how God will ride through Portacot. If, if a few men emerge who are dead, dead to the yearning of self-preservation, dead to the interest to make a name for themselves, you will find out that it won't take long. It won't take long. The kingdom will be the Lord. It's about kingdom. Believe me, it's about kingdom. Permit me to make these diversions from time to time. Let's pray for one minute again. Tell him to open your ears. Open my ears. Open my ears. Let me hear your counsel. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. We are at war. We are at war. And it's a battle between the elements of light and the agents of darkness. Amen. Whether you choose deliberately or not, your life will advance one of this kingdom. The matters I speak about, there is no middle ground. If you choose God, you have pledged allegiance to the advancement of his kingdom. If you don't choose God, you don't need to choose Satan. The moment you have not chosen God, you are fighting for Satan. Let me give you a little, a little hint of what I'm trying to share. I'm telling you that the princes who are interested in territories, their obsession is to dominate a space and write the laws of that space. So that if a righteous man enters that place, the air, the toxicity of the space will not make him thrive. He will have to run away. The corruption that has arrested the holy altars, that has also affected the Christian faith. Tell me who is defining what fashion is to our world. Tell me who is telling you what it means to look attractive. Tell me. Meanwhile, what the world is calling attractive is seduction. The more seductive and the more sex appeal that is factored into that design, that is what they call you are beautiful, that you are hot. Meanwhile, since we don't know that it's kingdom that are at war, what we do is that we carry from here, touch this one, carry this style, moderate it a bit. That your moderation does not change anything. Every day you come out like this and there are merchandise is on your body. You have become an ambassador for that kingdom. There will be more than, more than 500 young men who will look on you lustfully in their heart. They might not ask you out, but that is what qualifies for the New Testament definition of adultery and fornication. If you look lustfully in your heart, it says you have committed that sin. So imagine how many people you drew to the bed of fornication on account of a careless dress. This is, this is the intelligence of the princes. They know that they don't need you to be outrightly involved. But if they get you to be committed in certain ways that does not affront your kingdom, what you will do is that at the end of your life, you have not won any soul into heaven. But there will be many people in hell because of you. You will have been a valiant army who have conquered the Lord for hell. Can I go ahead and share about the pandemic of Yahoo Yahoo that have arrested our generation? where people can no longer trust an honest labor. In fact, they begin to advance and advocate for it so much that it begins to make anybody who wants to work hard look like he's a lazy, 
and a person who is not smart is a kingdom. If you know what is going on, you will know it's a, it's a kingdom. It's warfare. Brother, sister, which flag are you fighting for? We wrestle. <laughs> we wrestle. Which flag, which flag are you fighting for? Which flag is your life advancing? I want to show us something very quickly. We trust God for his power and for his presence and then we pray. I need us to realize that every one of us sitting here, none of us, none of us have lived up to God's idea of man. Sometimes we need to swallow our pride and look upon the first template that God had in mind, which is the first man, Adam. Before he fell, what was he like? And if we claim that salvation has restored us, are we near the capacity of Adam? Meanwhile, the last Adam is a better improvement to the first Adam. And we have not even catched up with the capacities of the first Adam. But we are clapping for ourselves. Do you know that Adam used to sit down and hear God's walking voice? Adam don't have to fall asleep to hear. God used to talk to Adam the way a man talks to his friend. Adam used to search God's heart and bring out God's will from it. God caused a deep sleep to come upon Adam. When Adam was unconscious, God removed a rib from him and made a woman. Adam woke up and told God what God did to him. He said she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Name, Adam, name anything God created was the same name God had in mind. If exactly, he, there was so much alignment. Do you know that there was no two-bedroom flat inside the Garden of Eden? Where was Adam living? His house was glory. Do you know that he was never wearing any clothes? Because when he fell, God did not say, what happened to your clothes? God says, who told you that you are naked? Where did you get this information? So it's about information. It's not about the loss of clothes. He, there was never any clothes. His clothing was glory. The nearest example that I will give you to what we lost is a madman. A madman. He stays outside and every rain that falls on the air, it will fall on him. He eats from the refuse dump. He drinks from the gutter. All the mosquitoes that you can imagine, they will feast on him. Yet, you are the only one they admitted in the hospital. Because the realm, the realm he is living, his flesh is not compliant with your laws of biology and physics and chemistry. You are the one that knows about Samuela Taifi. He does not know it. It's not real in his space. There is something that has given his body another definition. So that body can go through all kinds of hazard. Do you think he lives in any house? He lives inside the realm. Meanwhile, the three basic needs of man, according to World Health Organization, is food, clothing, and shelter. It was never a challenge for Adam. <laughs> we have not even catch up with the first glory. We are now saying that we have arrived. Arrived where? Can I share something with you? Potter Court, can I share something with you? There will be a need for certain people to be desperate and hungry tonight. You know what God wants to do? He wants to ignite a fire. And he wants to raise kingdom functionaries. We may be young, but we have discerned the need in the heart of our father. And so our manifestation is on time. Let nobody deceive you. There's nothing like the future again. It is time to manifest. Manifest now or go into oblivion. If there is any time to fight the war of darkness in your own generation, it's now. Now that your fellows, now that your brethren, now that your comrades are at war, if you don't find a way to manifest quickly and join us in the field, don't you know that there is a message, a handwriting on the wall? You think you have time? Some of you, the devil is telling you, don't worry, don't worry. When you grow up, you will touch something. You will not touch anything. If you cannot manifest now, you will. Why do you think I'm here? Before I came for your conference, the Lord burdened me to take a revival platform to Abi Uzaria. 
And when we got there, he began to remind me that when was the last time did I hear of functionaries and luminaries in the kingdom running through campus intentionally? And I said, ah, it's been a while. And he said that they have evolved into higher energy levels. Those of you who didn't miss your science class, well, let me not give this example. The art students will feel offended. <laughs> the anointing is like a shift. It's like a job that has shift. There are people who do morning shift and close by 12. Some people must continue from that 12. But by all means, the, the factory must be operating. You are not the first person that God's jealousy came upon. You are not the first person God's hand was, was jealous about. You are not the first person a body arrested. You are not the first person they woke up to pray at night. It is your own shift that you are abandoning. Woe betide you that the day where the responsibility of many generations, the place where many elders have walked, it now came to your own time. Then you were found wanting. Because of you, the agenda of the king was pushed backward for 20 years. The fields where Ketrin Kuhlman worked. Now look at the average, the average lady in church. When she's praying, praying, people say, we sense the grace of relationship and marriage on, on you. Are, you. are you serious? Gone are the days where stadia were packed. A woman, in the days of Amy Semple McPherson, Maria Woodward Eater, Madame Gullion, Catherine Coleman, they were organizing retreats and campaigns and crusades that were only for the cripples. If you are not crippled, don't come. Those, those, those clan, they have been removed from the world. But the good thing that I came to declare to you is that the anointings, they don't leave it. They are, they, they are still hanging somewhere. It will take the right quorum of prayer to pull it into reality. Somebody will cry in my day, in my time, Lord, move again, move again. Because as it is in the days of old, eh, there is nothing new under the sun. If you can contend well enough, if you can consecrate your body, in Romans chapter 12 verse 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Lord, that you present your body. You are the one to submit it. No spirit will take it from you. It says, present your bodies as living sacrifice. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20 and 21, it says, for in a great house, there are many vessels. There are vessels of silver, vessels of gold, vessels of wood, vessels of clay. Some to honor, some to dishonor. Look at it. It says, if a man can purge himself, you, you are the one to do it to yourself. He shall be a vessel unto honor. The dilemma in our generation is that morning shift ended. Afternoon shift took place and ended. But the night shift, they didn't show up. And we are the army of the down. We are the ones that needed to burn with holy vigor, with splendor of light, because we are the ones who war in darkness. We are those who were subscripted into the night shift, but we didn't show up. It was before your eyes that my smuro died. Today I keep my ear on the ground to see if there is any minister alive who operates with that horn of wisdom in that capacity. I'm yet to find one. You know how many Gentile presidents, how many monarchs were taking counseling session with a preacher because they discern that the hand, the wisdom of God is upon this one. Meanwhile, the rod of his ministry was wisdom. It was before your eyes that Billy Graham died. No single miracle in his crusades, but he brought millions of souls into the kingdom. It was before your eye that Rehad Donkey died. Um, amen now the question we should ask is that since if Elijah will leave time God will tell Elijah to give his stead to Elisha what happened to all of these hallowed mantles why are we repeating the same mistake of strange unique graces living time and there is no continuation it's because the people who ought to continue the labors of these men, they didn't meet the criteria that Elijah explained. He says, if you can see me, our eyes are not in the same things the elders are focusing on.
Let me break your bubble now quickly. If you don't repent and you continue what you plan to do, because I know it's still your plan, that you, you, you buy a house, you get a fine car, marry a fine damsel, your wedding picture, you have already snapped some gowns, you are making all kinds of plans, any of your friends that misbehave, you remove her from your, your bridal. One of these days, for every other thing you achieve, a level of emptiness will minister to your soul. Then you will understand that he has hid eternity in our hearts. You will know that it's only things of eternal root. Only those things can satisfy you. One day you will realize that if you don't labor now, you cannot labor later. The Bible says, I must walk the walk of he that sent me while it is day. There is a season of your life coming called the night where no man can walk. If you miss the day period, you will realize, start anything you want to do later. You have missed your window. This is what the Bible called the season of your appearing. John remained in the wilderness until the season of his appearance. Some of you, you ought to appear now, but you are nowhere to be found. And so the roll call is still echoed in Zion. John, where are you? Peter, where are you? Every time the territory is plunged into deeper layer of darkness, they echo the names of the deliverers. They echo the names of those they sent into Portacot to dress and to keep it. They are not around. Although they are alive, they have not manifested. Your life begins to count the day you show up. The same came. Many people have not showed up yet. You are alive, but you are doing your thing. The first thing God must do for you is to draw you into consciousness of his divine agenda and bring you into the new birth. The moment you are reborn, that's when you now have capacity to live up to the desire of God for your life. Meanwhile, all the hallowed prophecies of God, all the mighty valiant weapons of God sent into Portacos, there's an intelligence that the princes have deployed. They have studied the movements of celestial interest on your part. They've studied the encounters that God continued to grant you and they've studied the way God's jealousy is directed towards you. Cords of lust and vanity. So they didn't wait for you to grow up before you even know the difference between good and bad. They identified you very early and they made sure they bind your hand and they bound your foot. So they use addiction to detain princes. They use addiction to chain captains so that before you hear the summon of God, you are already a prisoner. You will hear his voice, but you will hear it from the dungeon. You are already addicted to pornography. Your soul has been denatured. Something had twisted your alignment so that you cannot beckon, you cannot answer the call of the God. There are many hallowed captains. Give him that singular instruction. Some of you, your first area of primary assignment is keep your family. They sent you there to be a wall. They sent you there as a military installation. So because of you, even while you were living in sin, your eye cannot help but stumble upon the programs of darkness. Everybody is sleeping. Only you is busy sleep in the night. Only you. They will wake you up and say, somebody will die. You will wake up in the morning and say, I saw death. The family will pray during morning devotion and counsel death. And only from the camp of darkness do they know that there is somebody that has been installed in this family to be for them a watchman, a savior, and a deliverer. But they identify you. That morning when you got up and said, ah, amen, 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 I have something to say. Then I say, what? And I say, I had a dream. I saw, I saw that daddy had accident. Meanwhile, that was the plan from the covens of darkness that have taken three months to concord. The details that were measured into that plan, the agents that will carry it out, everything took so much time. But then they had a young man who was not even living in compliance with the altars of God. They heard him declare it cheaply. I saw. So they say, who is this one? Who is this one that have the capacity to peep into the program of darkness? And so they begin to fill your well. They begin to bind your soul. The Bible says, the kingdom of God is like unto a man who planted good seed in his land. White men slept. An enemy came and planted. So the reason why Satan plants is not because he wants a harvest. 
he is planting in order to affect the capacity of the planting of the Lord so that the wheat will contend with the wheat so that is in every generation Moses listen to me you are sent to deliver a nation but you too you will start growing from the palace of the person you were sent to deliver the first 40 years of Moses' life he spent it believing he was a prince in Egypt the second 40 years of his life he spent it realizing he was a nobody the third 40 years of his life he spent it discovering what God can do with a nobody this is how a deliverer a captain and a prince this is how your life will start there will be a trajectory that will give you all kinds of advantage that would merge and unite and mix you with the ruling challenge you were sent to solve so you will be part of the problem you too you will look like you are a victim of the problem that is the only way God can hide you so that the program of darkness don't identify you on time so you will be right under the nose of Pharaoh Pharaoh is feeding you Pharaoh is teaching you the ways of the Egyptian he does not know that you are the biggest attack to Egypt a healing apostle will enter time as a sick child and they'll be carrying him from one hospital to another like a victim but right on that hand there is the one that will command deliverance for nations and God will permit that season the season will hide and veil everything about your manifestation see what the Bible says it says if they knew it's not only about Jesus even us too they don't know us there are many of you Satan is almost this one is a done case it will continue to rise and fall rise and fall until he dies in iniquity and go to hell Oh, you don't know you don't know the program of God the Bible says that there is a spirit in man there is the inspiration of the Almighty on that spirit that will give man understanding he says there's hope for a tree although it's cut short at the scent of water do you know where the end time army will be subscribed from they will not descend from Zion with pillars and with garments of fire they will be harvested from the valley of dry bones that's where that's that's one of the you know my most favorite prophet is Ezekiel I love his capacity to peep into concealed matters I love how many angelic ranking he fraternized with if you if that's not the subject of discussion part of the last facility he made available to us as a body is that he gave us a hint where the dwell to army will come from when you are reading Joel 2 and you are hearing the summon of the army of the Lord, you are seeing how they are set in battle array. The way they will not break rank. The way a fire burned before them and behind them a flame. The way they run like horses. When you are reading it, they didn't tell you where they came from. This is Ezekiel that told you where they were subscripted from. Ezekiel began by showing a people helpless, a people reduced by the climate and the aroma of corruption and that they have been dried in the valley of dry bones. Then he ended that prophecy that they stood an exceeding great army. It is Joel that showed you the purpose of that army. The moment they have been harvested from the valley, from the miry clay, from the place Satan has brought them to. So there is a first season that will befall the generation of the deliverers. They will be reduced to dry bones. There are certain prostitutes, certain slave queens, certain Yahoo boys that Yahoo is not the end of their story. There are chapters God can use. There are chapters God can use. Hi. Can somebody pray one prayer where you are? Ask Jesus to wake you up. Say, use me. Use me. Use me. I'm available. Use me. I am your man. Use me. I am your battle axe. Use me. Hi. Use me. Use me! Water court. Would you miss this divine visitation? Would you miss this clarion call? Would you miss the sacred beckoning of the Lord? Where 
are the walls? Where are the gatekeepers? Where are those who dress and keep this space? Wake me up, wake me up, wake me up, wake me up. Ignite something divine on my inside. Set me on fire. Can you ask the Lord? Can you ask the Lord? He says he shall baptize men with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Why are you so cold? Why are you so nonchalant? Why is there no sense of urgency in your spirit? Why are you not consumed with any particular body? Why haven't God entrusted a body on your soul? Why can't that body change your appetite? Why are you satisfied, brother? Why are you satisfied, sister? That God has not communicated any of his program through you. Why are you so relaxed that you are not advancing anything for God? Where do you think the deliverance of Potakot will come from? And the man that he formed, he put him in the garden. The man he formed, he put him in Potakot to dress and to keep it. To dress and to keep it. It's time for men to mount up and begin to man the gates. If you are designed to secure a family, secure it. If you are raised to secure a territory, secure it. I stir princes up tonight. I wake captains up. I stir gatekeepers and watchmen. I stir you up. Awake from the slumber that has bedeviled us. In Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8, he says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who will I send? Who will go for us? He says, Here am I. Send me. That's your prayer. Here am I. Here am I. Here am I. Search no further, Lord. Here am I. You have a man in Potakot. You have, you have, you have. Brother, your prayer tonight is equivalent to enlisting into an army. It's like you are registering. You are filling a form. Your prayer is like you are filling a form. Don't get tired. I'm available, Lord. Use me. Use me. Use me. Use me. Use me. Use me. Run through Potakot by me. Set me on fire, oh God. And spread that fire over this land. Wake my generation up from slumber after you have woken me up. I... Can somebody cry? Don't leave me like this. Don't leave me like this. My story cannot end inside this dungeon. My story cannot end in addiction. My story cannot end as a prisoner. But I could pray. Here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. He cannot force his will on you. And so there must be a willing heart yielded to say, Here am I, send me, send me, send me. life will not end like this my story will not end like this spend my life spend my life spend my life like Ketrin Kulma he will ask the Lord I know I am nothing but if you can use nothing use me use me use me Jesus use me use me use me use me use me, use me. Jesus win Potakot for yourself do it with me don't do it without me don't do it without me. Brother, you cannot, you cannot be tired now. You cannot be looking for comfort now. You cannot be looking for convenience now. At least.
the salvation of Potakot are in this hall right now. The deliverers of Potakot are in this hall right now. The elders are about to lift hand. But God's voice is now in the temple calling Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. Because another generation must emerge. The priesthood must be occupied. Can you say, here am I, here am I, here am I, send me, send me, send me, send me to the nations of the earth, send me. That voice is in the temple again. He's calling Samuel, 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 Samuel. It is that voice that is that hunger to pray every night. That hunger to pray every night is a voice. Hi. are you brother how old are you sister how old are you when would you yield this life to God how many years can God spend out of your life why is darkness having a few day through your life Brother, intensify, intensify fire. Sister, intensify. Add more fire. Don't be quiet now. Don't be quiet. Add fire. I come in the volume of the books. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Louder, 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 louder. Don't be quiet. I am your man, oh God. Lo, I come in the volume of the books. Lo, I come, lo, I come, lo, I come.
Alléluia. 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 If you can give me your attention, please give me your attention. I see a demonic veil. I see a demonic veil spread over this city. I see a demonic veil spread over this city. And it is an installation to reduce to what extent men can apprehend the urgency of the things of the spirit. It is to water down things before they reach you. It is to water down intensity so that the things that get to men are only cerebral. I see a demonic veil. The Holy Ghost wants to ignite a flame inside the altars of men. That fire will be ignited by divine finger. It will burn. It will define your appetite. Forget all this uh, uh, resolution you are trying to use to overcome the permutation of princes. Only fire will overcome it. That fire will be ignited inside you. Suddenly your interest will change. It is the fire that purifies. I'm speaking to captains. I'm speaking to watchmen, to gatekeepers. I'm speaking to every prince who have been detained in dungeons of captivity. I'm speaking to those who have been identified early and they have bound them hand and foot. I'm speaking to those who are the hope of Potakot. But manifestation has become a challenge because princes identify them on time and they sun fill the wells that they ought to drink from. Today, by the hand of the Lord and by the move of the Spirit, I ignite your altar again with holy fire. May the hand of the Lord begin to touch now, now from the back to the front, from the left to the right. There is fire on your altar. There is fire, fire, fire. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Altars are being ignited. The veil is torn. The veil is torn now. The veil is torn. The veil is torn. In the name of Jesus, it is torn. There is intensity now. fire burn everywhere oh oh fire holy ghost fire burn oh fire holy ghost fire burn everywhere oh oh fire holy ghost fire burn oh fire Holy Ghost fire upon everywhere. Oh, oh fire. Holy Ghost fire. Oh, oh. Listen. 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 Please be seated if you can. to us in Isaiah chapter 60 verse 2 the Bible says behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness will cover the people so after darkness has shaped a territory 
and have written the laws that have become cultures and predominant patterns of sin there will be another particular arrangement from the kingdom of darkness where they now want to tame men they want to make the, the ordinations of people to be missing and so the only thing that they deployed is called gross darkness gross means compounded accumulated aggregated not just darkness gross darkness so darkness will cover the earth but gross darkness will cover the people hallelujah 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 born to be a sign and a wonder but there is a program in darkness that has been deployed to hide you to make sure you never manifest to make sure you can be alive but you can never live up to the expectation of God for your life a deliverer can be among the victim but he is he has the ordination of a deliverer a savior can be part of the prisoners and he will live his whole life as a prisoner till he dies the great teacher says I see another wickedness under the sun that princes were walking on their feet while servants riding horses so ordinations have been misplaced the token of God concerning our manifestation have been abandoned and so the program of darkness deployed to hide men's manifestation is called cross darkness he says cross darkness will cover the people you have overcome darkness you have overcome the challenge of your own generation so if everybody is swayed by an immoral aura you have touched certain layers of consecration so you have presented your body as a living sacrifice the devil is not he is not impressed by what you have done the only thing you have overcome is the darkness that covers that one is they deployed it for territory they were not thinking about you as a death they were only trying to shape a territory. This is where many believers fall. They fall for darkness that covers. They have not even, the darkness that, the one that is designed for man has not come for them, but they have fallen already. Somebody now say, well, sir, you know it's not easy. You know it's not easy. There's a way the lady dressed. That's why I fell. What you fell for is a culture. There was no spirit that came for you. Satan don't even know your name yet. It is the day you overcome darkness that covers, that is when you become a candidate for gross darkness. And it is gross darkness that was designed for human beings. Darkness that covers is for territory. They were only trying to extend government and you, you became a victim. You say it's not easy. The it's not easy you are talking about is about a shape of a culture of iniquity that you have become a victim of. No spirit know you yet. No matter how many times you say it's the devil, the devil knows that he has no business with you yet. He only comes for those who have prevailed over the excuse of their generation. Those who have prevailed over the darkness that covers, they become the candidates for the gross darkness. If you are here and your life has struck a chord in compliance with God's demand for your life and in living up to the altars of consecration, you are a candidate for gross darkness. It is at that point, man of God, demons who know your name you can be doing anything you want to do as long as you have not confronted cross darkness they don't know who you are in fact they will tell you Paul I know Jesus I know you who are you when cross darkness is presented to us it is like a canopy look at me are we together please if you are getting blessed say amen, amen. just imagine a canopy like smoke covering a whole land and that canopy like smoke as it's covering the whole land certain people's head busted through that canopy like smoke these are the ones that have overcome the darkness that covers the earth the moment you can overcome the darkness that covers the territory meanwhile 
if I want to itemize, if I want to isolate the darkness that covers Portacot, I will show you a certain way of life that is in total departure to the demand of God that is a norm in the society. It's a canopy. There is a strong expression of cultism here. Strong. There is a very strong expression of boredom here. Untamed. Running as they like. Meanwhile, there is warfare here too. There is a clash between light and darkness. This is why in conferences like this, what Jesus wants to do is like the foxes of Samson. He wants to set you on fire and leave you to run into the field. So that everywhere your feet touches you, set on fire. That fire, it will be ignited on your inside. You become a transfer of fire. But you cannot communicate fire until you are ignited. The darkness I'm speaking about has only one antidote. It's called light. The only solution to darkness is light. But in the era where scriptures were written and compiled, the patriarchs did not have any other understanding of light than fire. In fact, Mr. Welt, when the Bible talks about light, they were making reference to fire. As at the time where scriptures were compiled and written, the patriarchs that wrote these things down, they never imagined that an electric bulb would be, would be created. They didn't know that an invention called an electric bulb would be created and it would be for light purpose. So, even in the palaces of kings, the only light they have is flame, is touch. So, anytime they say light, they are making reference to fire. It means you cannot shine unless you're born. You only shine to the degree that you are born. This is why when they wanted to describe the person called John, they say he was a burning and shining. So, you cannot shine until you are born. In Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1, it says, arise and shine. Guess what? It's actually telling you to arise and born. Born with holy vigor. You shine to the degree that you are. In fact, the sun, the sun that you are looking at, as bright as it is, it is a combustion of gases. What is happening there is actually fire that, is, that you are seeing as light. The sun is combustion. It's combustion happening there. Every fire that the elders wrote about, So from Portacot, the darkness that covers will spread like a canopy, hiding everybody's ordination, hiding everybody's manifestation. Then certain people, helped by the Lord, will begin to defy the old. Their head will begin to pierce through the canopy of darkness. When they emerge from that darkness, they become visible to the radar of cross darkness. It is only then Satan knows who you are. That time that your head have out of that canopy. You know what gross darkness is, sister? Gross darkness is the besetting sin. In Hebrews chapter 12, he says, seeing that we are surrounded with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that easily beset us. So Satan's plan, hey, are you getting blessed? Satan's plan is not for you to commit different sins in one day. Satan does not have a record or a list where he, he, he ticks stealing. Then you steal. You say you have steal for today. A lie. A lie. He wants you to be compatible with one particular infirmity, one sin. Let that sin eat your soul so deeply that you cannot attain spiritual stability because of that sin. What that sin will do, it will deprive you of your capacity to live up to your ordination. In James chapter 1, verse 7 and 8, he says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man think he will receive anything valuable from the Lord. That, that instability up today, down tomorrow, they say you cannot receive anything of the Lord. God cannot trust you with anything. Because if they give you anything, you will lose it cheaply to darkness. So Satan is not interested in taking you through a road call of sin. His interest is to peg one sin into your life. Let that sin eat up your soul and become one with you. There are people here, what Satan has identified as your besetting sin is lost. It has eaten you deeply. If you are dealing with that, 
you are welcome to the second layer of warfare. It's called cross darkness. They actually went into the studios of, of darkness and they produced a weapon with you in mind. It is actually in this particular layer of warfare that that scripture becomes applicable. No weapon formed or fashioned with you in mind shall prosper. So the weapon was not designed generally for everybody. They studied your proclivity. They studied your tendency. They studied your appetite. They saw where your grandfather fell. They saw the sin that your father could not overcome. So they knew this is a struggle that has capacity to tame you. So they didn't bother to do many things. They identified the besetting sin. People who will overcome gross darkness, they will conquer the besetting sin. darkness has become the order of the day over many families everybody is down delay stagnation sickness all kinds of all kinds of limitation but there is a deliverer in that family living like a normal human being with them and God is holding you responsible for why everybody is going through what they are going through because you have refused to live up to your ordination like Samson you have treated your destiny on the bed of pleasure But I have good news. In the land where darkness has ravaged, in an era where darkness has signed its signature, the Bible speaking in Matthew chapter 4, verse 15, it says, The land of Zebulun, the land of Nephtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentile, the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. And those who dwell in the region of the shadow of death, it says, Light has sprung up. So inside Portacos, inside the heart of the culture of iniquity, God will begin to ignite fires. I told you, fire is light. Light is fire. If you burn, you will shine. Let me show you the correlation. Jesus says, ye are the light of the world. You are a city set upon a hill that cannot be hidden. The next verse, he says, no man lights a candle. So the light he was talking about is fire. You don't want to burn. That's why there's no witness in your space. You don't want to burn. The days that are coming, there will be no publicity of billboard, no publicity of flyers. Your publicity is your intensity of flame. How hot are you? What, what melts when they come around you? Meanwhile, you are busy complaining that it's not easy. I have fasted. The sin did not die. I have prayed. It did not die. I read the word. It did not die. Brother, you don't understand the protocol of deliverance. Did you know that there are gems that can survive very high temperatures? The, the, your, your challenge is that you have never attained boiling point. You, you, will go, you will touch fire small, you will, hit, you will hit 30 degrees Celsius, then you will come back and say, we prayed, we prayed, we fasted. There are gems that can survive 30 degrees Celsius. This is why when you want to sterilize a thing, you expose it to boiling point. If you hit boiling point, the only thing that will survive is divine. It's only the things that are eternal. The things that journey from eternity into time with you. Those are the only appetite that will be left. But somebody pray for one day, he becomes proud. He, he, he received the name of a ministry because he prayed for one day. Meanwhile, your soul is bounded by, by an addiction. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand upon his holy mountains? The criteria is one and it will never change. He that has a clean hands and a pure heart that has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. And every captain in our generation, everybody with a hallowed ordination, you cannot manifest anywhere. There's only one location where you blow your trumpet. In church, you speak from. If you speak from the valley, it will be like you're making noise in your generation. They will not listen to you. They only hear men who utter their voices from Zion. When they speak from there, your voice becomes like the sound of a trumpet. But the criteria to climb that mountain, this is where many men are disqualified. Who shall ascend? Today I tie my charge up tonight with a single exhortation. The Bible says, let, let, let your light shine. Let means permit your light to shine. Allow your light to shine. Stop hindering your light from shining. 
because if you can purge yourself you will become a vessel unto honor needs for the master's use you are the only thing standing between God and his agenda in your life it is you it's not Satan it is every sin that you are falling for and every agenda of Satan is cooperating with your appetite the Bible says when we are tempted let no man say we are tempted of the Lord it is our own loss that is in our heart that spirits explored so you must first yield yourself rid yourself of this appetite to live for wantonness to live for lasciviousness surrender your heart for Jesus if Jesus can number you that's the first encounter tonight I don't know where you are but I came because of you I don't know how long you have heard an echo in your soul that there is a program of God factored into your life and if you don't answer it you are about to miss a season of manifestation I don't know how long Satan had continued to draw you into deeper layers of corruption to make sure you don't manifest in your full splendor meanwhile you are a winged creature but you have lived your whole life with men on the ground he says but them that wait upon the Lord Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 they shall renew their strength they will mount up the amplifier say they will carry their wings their wings they will mount up with wings that is when you understand the economy of God the things that are impossible with men are not impossible with God and so you will find out that a result that takes 20 years with men because you use the air part of the advantage of the air is that you compress time if I travel by road from here back to Kaduna I might take a whole day if I travel by air I will take one hour I will arrive another person have 23 hours 23 hours to, to struggle in destiny this is how many of you who ought to be mounting up with wings and flying by now you are with men that is why the pattern in your family is holding you bound because roadblock is only on the land if you enter the air there is nothing that can hold you there they say there is one pattern pattern is not in the air it's only men who remain on the land that are victims competition is not in the air because the air is massive those bishop who reporter says the air is too big all birds can fly it's only people who are trekking men who are walking on foot they are the ones that are you see, who, who is the most popular man of you are you are a joker what we are contending for is dynasties in God we are contending for thrones and dominions we are contending for capacity to stand as a prince over a region Hallelujah. 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 Today, my charge is a summer. It's an enlistment campaign. I'm calling an army to come and sign their signature and say, I belong. I joined the army of the Lord of my generation. I joined the camp of God. I joined the flag of Jesus. You are here and you know that there is more to your life than all that you have continued to labor on. You know that there is a beckoning. There is an echo from eternity that is drawing your attention to the purposes of God for the season and for the time. Wherever you are, run out now. Come quickly. I came because of you. Don't waste time. Come. Come. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
you have found me. He says, I sought for a man who will stand in the gap. I sought for a man. Lord, you have found me. Please make this your prayer. You need to join them. Please come out now. Come and join them. Come. Come. Don't stay behind. Come. My heart goes out to you. Come. You have found me. Come, brother. Come, sister. God bless you. You have found me. You have found me. You have found your man. You have found your intervention. You have found your deliverer. You have found me, Jesus. some of you kneeling down in front of this place you are the next voice over your region the testament of God is upon your lip his commandments is in your heart you are his battle axe his weapon of war Fight.
wherever you are, wherever you are, let's pray together. Say, Lord Jesus, I am yours. Today, I surrender to you. My life is your own. My body is your temple. Live through me. Live through me. Continue your ministry through me. I believe that you died on the cross and I died with you. I believe that you rose from the dead and I was raised with you. From today, I live for you. I believe that I am saved. I believe I am a child of God. Say it again. I am a child of God. One more time. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to sin. activations and impartations the next 10 minutes i will release everything god has instructed me to deposit please we can go to our seats so we can use this space while going to your seats can you pray one prayer Ask the Lord, baptize me with fire. Baptize me with fire. Baptize me with fire. It's time to be endued. It's time to be equipped. It's time to be energized. Baptize me with fire. Baptize me with fire. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? Baptize me with fire. What how do you intend to shine without fire? How do you intend to witness without fire? How can you dispel darkness without fire? It's time to mount up. It's time to ascend. It's time to turn it up. to lay hold on something eternal. Stay your 
Phoenix. You and I will change the world. Stay your spirit. Holy Ghost. You and I will change the world. You can even pull it. Holy Ghost. You and I will change the world. Holy Ghost. Set me on fire. Holy Ghost. You and I will change the world. Everybody, there is about to be a release of ancient mantles, ancient mantles, ancient mantles, mantles long lost, mantles long forgotten. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, begin to respond to the hunger of men. Hi. Holy Ghost, touch, 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 touch. Please help them, help them. Touch, fire upon you, fire upon you, fire, fire. Kulman, the mantle of Amy Semple McFasson, the mantle of Madame Gullion, the mantle of Maria Woodward Eater. I stretch my hands over God's people. 
and I awake the boras, the boras, the boras, the boras. I set you on fire everywhere they are. I ignite your altars now. Be a blaze. There's a prophetic stream. It's like a river. It's like a river. It is flowing. It is flowing now. It is flowing. It is flowing. You can't stop it. You can't resist it. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Overpower them. Overpower them. Overpower them. Overpower them. Activation. This is the last activation. I would, I would, I would, I would. Listen, listen. This is the last activation that the Holy Ghost will be leading me to do tonight. Just listen. I speak. I speak to every captain. I speak to every deliverer, every savior, every watchman. I speak to everybody with one ordination to lead their generation or another that darkness has been fighting darkness has been warring against to make sure you don't hit spiritual consistency i speak to every captain of the host of god who is currently hiding who is currently unknown currently unseen unmanifested by the fire of the lord i identify you by fire let the fire come on you now let the fire separate you now let the fire no 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 By fire! You are separated by fire. You are preserved by fire. You are sustained by fire. Now, manifest by fire. Manifest by fire. There's a fire on your inside. There's a fire kindled in need.
living God is our Holy Ghost, Center of the Kingdom. He's the Holy Ghost, so Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Age. chapter 10 verse 38 the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him God wants to anoint us with power he wants to anoint us with the Holy Ghost you must carry something in this generation you must carry something Holy Ghost Everybody out here, everybody out here, by your divine fire, rest upon them now by fire. Rest now, rest, 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 by fire. Rest on them, rest on them, rest on them. I set your altars on fire. Holy Ghost, touch, touch. Everything else can wait. Give me you, I hope I'm not. 